finally mastering on the channel yes we're gonna talk about mastering today and we're gonna just you know dig in talk about the basics talk about the pros and cons and if you are into mixing mastering music production singing songwriting whatever in music creation this channel is for you so make sure you subscribe to the channel are you ready let's go Okay, so today we're going to talk about one of the most misunderstood words on the internet when it comes to music production, and that is mastering. Oh, finally, someone that can explain the word mastering in my own ways. This is my take on mastering during my 23 years or so as a music producer. I get to work with a lot of artists and I get this question a lot. Hey, can you master my track? Yes, I can, but it depends on the quality of the track. So, from the beginning, what is mastering? Mm? Okay, so we have to look at mastering as two different types of mastering. We have to look at it as it were back in the days and what it is now. Back in the days, mastering was a way to make sure that all of your tracks, all of your songs on, let's say, an album was equally loud was had equal uh, EQ and stuff like that so that the, the listener experience was okay so that uh, you don't have this highs and lows and the, this the one one of the songs is too low one of the songs is too high in volume and all that so that was really the the first version of mastering nowadays mastering is something completely different because there are in many ways, there are so much more singles done and it's so much more about making your song equal to the other songs that are out there on the radio, on Spotify, on iTunes, whatever. So it's more like fitting in in that kind of blend instead of fitting in on your album or your five song EP or so. So we have to look at it in, in different ways and both of the ways can be a good thing to learn about. Okay, so um, mastering is not a quick fix. It's not a fix at all. It's something that shouldn't be needed in my opinion. Hmm, how about that? Well, I believe that you should mix your track like mastering is not an option. So you don't, you don't, there, there should be no, no relaxation in, hey, it's going to be fixed in the mastering. No, it's not going to be fixed in the mastering, because if so, well, you haven't, then you haven't done a proper mix job. What else is on my list? Okay. Hey, I have a bad sounding mix. Can you master it? No, I can't, because you have to go back and do the mix again. Hmm. You get the, you, you get the idea. Um, and what is it to know about mastering more? Um, you know, mastering is used to be, it's always, uh, almost always on the master bus fader if you do it yourself. So let's, let's hit the studio and I have a, a lot of tracks here and, and every track is summed up on this channel called Stereo Out. This is for streaming, so we don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about that. I can worry about that. Okay. So what you need to know before we go into any details in another video uh, is that everything you do on this channel will, will affect everything on the track. Um, and why do I say this? Well, do you really want more high end on your bass guitar? Do you really want more low end on your hi-hat? Maybe you do, but make sure that you uh, before you tweak anything, you ask yourself what is mixing, what is missing on the entire track, because that's where everything is going to be affected. Yes, you can use multiband compression to affect certain amounts of low end only, but still, it's going to be all the low end. It's not going to be the bass guitar and not the bass drum or vice versa. So. Be very gentle if you move any, if you have any moves there. There are billions of types of 
ways you can do mixing and mastering. And one of the ways is really to do some kind of reverse mixing, which is to add stuff on your stereo bus at first. And then you might do the uh, add stuff on your, uh, in this case, the, the yellow channels is like a uh, group channel. No, these tracks are the group channels, sorry. The group channels where you have maybe bass, and kick, kick and bass, uh, vocals, stems, synthesizer, whatever. And then you go to each individual track to do so. So there are m many ways of mixing, but as we all know, all what matters is what comes out of the speakers in the end. I don't care about the way you are mixing and mastering. The only thing I care about and the only, only thing that your listeners will care about is how they feel when they listen to your music. I'm sorry, but they don't care about your beautiful chain of effects that is chained to this EQ, to this thing delay and blah, 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 that you know is there. They don't care. They don't care. All that they care about is how they feel. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. All they care about is how they feel when the music hits them. You Maybe you have the most beautiful tuned bass drum in the world and you have done thousands of hours on that bass drum. They don't care. They don't care. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do a lot of um, specific work on every instrument. Yes, you should, but be care, uh, care for that they know uh, that they feel something uh, in the end and when they listen to the music. They, they don't see the music as you do. You see all the things, you have a visual thing and that is not always a good thing because you see the visuality and you see, oh, that's, this is where the bass drum comes in and this is where this comes in and you, uh, there's something with the eyes that can really fool ourselves, ourselves. The listener, they don't care. They only have their ears and they're gonna listen. So that's all what matters. And most importantly, how they feel when the music hits them. Hmm. What is more on my list? Let's see. Can we show something in the thing here? Um, okay. So what I used to do is in a good world, I have, this is a limiter called L2, almost like a verb. Let's L2 something. Um, this is something that I have most of the times as a last resort, as a, the, the last thing on my chain. I'm not gonna, through, gonna go through this entirely, but I can say that my go-to ways is first to take away stuff that I don't need. And then I'm gonna change to a sound that I love. And then I'm gonna make sure that the level is high enough. So that's, that's you know, the basic of my wor version of mastering, but I'm gonna go through that in a later video. So, what have we learned today? We have learned that mastering is not a quick fix. I believe that you should mix, produce, and write your track like mastering is not an option. How about that? How about that? Let's try that, shall we? And what else? Well, make sure you think from the listener's perspective when it comes to things that are making a big change. They don't care about your beautiful hi-hat, how it's done. They don't care how it's done. They care about how they feel. So if you like what I do, please subscribe to the channel that makes me uh, make these videos a lot more. So if you're into mixing, music production, music writing, songwriting, and also business when it comes to music production, hey, let me know, put it in the comments and let's discuss. I wanna learn, I hope you wanna learn too. Until next time, take care out there. See you soon, bye-bye.